the Mashishing Civic Coalition uh, organization that is based in Bumalanga. Gentlemen, thank you very much for making the time to come to studio. Let's start with you, uh, Mr. Nkosi. You are... Oh. Mokwana. Mokwana. Yes. Mr. Mokwana. I see. All right. Um, it would appear then, which one is Mr. Ngozi between the two of you? I, it would seem I have my, uh, <laughs> my, 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 my instruction is wrong. All right. Mr. Ngozi is not here no. yet. All right. Hopefully we are going to have him because he has committed uh, to come through. So, Mr. Mokwana, um, you are the police officer. Former. That, former police officer yes. that was fired for doing his job. All right, we're going to start with Mr. Eletwaba first. For you, you lead the civic organization in the area of Mpumalanga, the Mashishing uh, Civic Organization. Tell us what it's like for residents <coughs> in Mpumalanga to, to live there right now. What is the situation? Thank you, uh, Babe Mugambi and the viewers. I'm Pompi Letoaba from Mashishin Civic Coalition. Mm. It's a civil society movement. We champions and protect the rights of our people. Uh, when we talk about Mpumalanga province, we're talking about the hell. Mm. When, we talk about, or when we're talking about Mpumalanga province, with since the days of the current, uh, the former Premier of Mpumalanga and the current Deputy President, the most brutal man in the history of Mpumalanga politics, Mr. Davete David Mabuza, the current Deputy President. Mm -hmm. In fact, to, to make it short, Mpumalanga province was named a province of January killings. And this province was named a province of general killings by the current minister of police, General Bekikele. Let me be honest with you. Since the years, since 2009, when the current deputy president and the former premier of Mpumalanga, David Davete Mabuza, mm. became the former, people begin perishing one by one. We're talking about more than 27 people who were murdered. And it is most unfortunate that those murders, those assassinations, those killings are not, are not told to the public. Let me tell you something. A gun and a bullet that killed Semim Pathanyana, the most well-respected and revered whistleblower. It's a gun that belonged to police officers. Imagine when uh, guns and bullets belonging to police officers being used to kill people. And what is more frightening is all these 27 cases that people were killed. Mm they all disappeared or evaporated into thin air. In simple practical terms, and that the Mgambi, Mpumangalanga province is a province of general lawlessness, and the champion and architects of the whole exercise are the men in blue with Brigadier Lenothati protecting all this a, a, a genocide against innocent civilians of, uh, uh, of Mpumalanga province. It's painful. Lapa Mpumalanga, nga satani, sibuyaga satad. I thank you. Those are very disturbing words. Sir, you were a police officer. Yes. Between which period and when did your service end and why were you fired? Um, <clears throat> morning once more, Goli, and, uh, and the viewers at home. I joined SAPS in 2004 and uh, dismissed in, in 2018. But first, Goli, I think it's proper that I first pay my, my respect 
to my two former colleagues, one being Warrant Officer Matebula, who was brutally murdered. And uh, his murderers are still roaming our streets. Mm. Even though information leading to the arrest of whoever was involved was there. Mm. And also to my very close colleague, um, Sergeant Marikaba, mm -hmm. whom we just buried late last year. Yeah. All right. Just to move things up very quickly, you have stated to us that you were fired from yes. the police service for doing your job. Exactly. When exactly did this happen and what exactly was the issue? Um, it happened when I was, I was fired in 20, 2018, but this started way back where I was working for the Leidenberg K-9 unit. You can even Google it now, it's still there, that nine members of the Leidenberg K-9 unit were arrested for corruption, which was a blatant lie because those charges were thrown out of court. Uh, I was discharged from the internal uh, departmental cases. What was transpiring is that uh, we were a problem to a syndicate of criminals dealing in, in illegal cigarettes and drugs. The illegal cigarettes were coming from Zimbabwe mm -hmm. and um, passing through Leidenberg. Mm. And in Leidenberg, there were five identified farms or plots mm. where it was a, a, a den where they would stock pile these cigarettes. And uh, there was a, run, a lady who was running the operations there. We arrested that lady more than five times for illegal cigarettes as the Leidenberg dog unit. Mm. And uh, within that syndicate of, of, of illegal cigarettes runners or, or, or dealers, they were our own bosses, mm. our own commanders. Mm. In, the, in, the sense that, uh, in the sense that we, we gave information. Let me tell you this, this, this uh, and uh, viewers must also uh, follow this. As a member of the, the, the K9, we are uniformed. Mm -hmm. Then we share the information with, um, I will give this name because the guy was it's also dismissed from the service that was General Mapiani. He was in the intelligence. So we, we, we share this information at General. This is the information. We identified five times and here is a person whom we arrested more than five times. We arrest this person for, for cigarettes. He goes to court. She pays 5,000 rand. She's out doing a business. Yeah. And um, now we became a problem. We became a, a problem. We became a threat to our, our, our seniors who were involved in the cigarettes. Now, a plan was hatched that the Leidenberg K9 unit should be fleshed out, should be removed, because it was, it was a disturbance to the movements of cig illegal cigarettes and drugs. Now, in, 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 in 2015, we they identified uh, plots. We went to hit one, which we share the information with the intelligence services. But the information leaked. Upon our arrival at the scene, the cigarettes were, all, were, were already gone. Now we decided, as members of the K9, this unit was of compromised, or I mean, consisted of very highly honest, hardworking police officers. All right, we, we, we have to speed it up. Yes. I, I'm, I'm still not clear about why you were fired. I think just in one sentence, take us there very quickly because there are other people that need to come into the conversation. We were actually fired. We were fired, not only me. For what? For being a problem mm. to that lineage of illegal cigarette smugglers because we were arresting these people. They tried to bribe us several times and we refused. They tried to recruit us into their network and we refused. So Prior why did your seniors fire you? And Prior to, um, remember I said in 2015 we were arrested for corruption. Yeah. That we took money from the very same person whom we arrested more than five times. All right. Which was a lie. All right. I think, I think <coughs> we, we now get the gist of the story. Mm. We're going to now bring into the conversation the MMC of Emma Lahleni, Mr. Mtutuzinkosi, whom I introduced earlier. Uh, he has arrived into studio, but before... We bring him into the conversation. Let's just listen to activist Mandla Portman, who blew the lid on the alleged business corruption that's taking place, he alleges, in Emalahleni in Bumalanga. Portman uh, even has gone as far as pointing a finger 
at the country's deputy president, David Mabuza. You've already heard him being mentioned here. And this is what Bortman told us yesterday. Let's just have a listen. These are the criminal syndicates who are being used by uh, 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 people in power, the MMC of technical, by the name of Mtutuzi and Kosi. He's called, he's well known as Mswati. This guy is from Swaziland. He was, he, the problem of Malasheni today, the problem that we have today, is because of the deputy president. He brought this man to us, illegally so. And this guy, his KP has captured, he has captured the city, he has captured the mayor, he has captured the MM, he has captured the, the municipal manager, has captured everybody in the, in the, in, in, in the region and in, in the province by threats. And he's the MMC of what? He's the MMC of technical. MMC of technical in, in, in which in, municipality? A, a, a Malasheni municipality. A Malasheni yes. municipality. This guy is the most dangerous person we have. We are in this mess because of this guy. He uses these people, the so-called uh, Shigisha. It's a, it's, a, it's a group of gangsters mm -hmm. who are claiming to represent community. They are terrorizing everybody, persecuting everybody. All right. Well, Mr. Mtutu Nkosi is on your screen right now. Mr. Nkosi, you, you seem to be uh, amused by what has been said about you. Tell us how you respond to allegations, first of all, that you are part or you are basically the one instructing this vigilante group, if we could call them that, that is going around harassing businesses in Pumalanga. It's a group called Shigisha. Are you aware of them? Uh, thanks. Thanks a lot, Oli, uh, and uh, the listeners uh, or the viewers, and thanks for uh, having me here. Uh, first of all, I will say, if, if I'm a threat or threatening people, mm. it, it must be proven, because allegations are allegations, that uh, there may be some cases or I've appeared in court for threatening people or for leading vigilante groups or whatsoever uh, they are called. Uh, from where I'm seated, um, I'm just a, a public servant mm. deployed by my very own leader of government, which is the leading party, to discharge a mandate as per the manifesto and IDP. Mm. And uh, if we are the allegations or it is said that uh, I'm threatening projects and constructions, it must be in a sense that uh, maybe where I'm deployed, we are not spending and the project are being stopped. We are not spending. Yeah. Uh, but from where I'm seated, we are spending 100% of whatever that we are given. And it then becomes that it is very little because of the aging infrastructure. Instead, we need more. And uh, maybe the said person is assisting us so that maybe the public and the private can come together and assist the city of Emalatledi in getting more funds. What All right. We, yeah. uh, Mr. Nkosi, do you have any links to this Shigisha group? From where I'm seated, in Emalatledi, we have got a number of business forums that, uh, that affiliate to the LED uh, structures are you suggesting? Are you so suggesting that I the do, Shigisha group there is, is, there is a, there a is business one, forum? There is one that is called Shigisha Group. And yes, they operate like all the others that are more than 20 around Emala mm -hmm. And I know most of them. I can mention them, even the one that was, wa wa that was once led by the very same Mandla, that are seeking opportunities mm -hmm. in the private sector, but not hijacking construction in government. And How so are forth. they seeking these opportunities in the, in the By engaging. Sector. And opportunities in a sense like, it can be food parcels, it can be uh, skills and development, uh, development training, mm. uh, it can be incubating or uh, uh, grooming, capacitating SMMEs from the previously disadvantaged uh, background. Yeah. And as I've said, there are more than 20, I can mention some of them. It's not only Shigisha, yes. and uh, I, I can't call them vigilante, vigilantes because they've never threatened me, all of them in Emala Lane. Yeah. Instead, we have always said that organize yourselves towards the banner of the LED forum and advance 
economic emancipation within that fora which is led by the municipality. All right. Mr. Gossi, let's pause there for a moment. We're going to take a short breather. When we return, we're going to ask the police in Bumalanga. Lena Tlati is on the line and he's going to tell us about the so-called activities of this Shigisha group. We're hearing they are called a business forum. Others are calling them a vigilante group. Which is which? We're going to find out. Good morning to you if you're just joining us and uh, we are trying to make sense of what is going on in Pumalanga, a grouping that is called Shigisha. Some say it is a vigilante group that is going around harassing businesses demanding 30% stake in various projects that are taking place there. The MMC in Emalahleni says this is a business forum like any other and therefore there is no reason at why they should not be allowed to do what they do to try and get themselves uh, into business. Let's bring into the conversation now the police in Pumalanga. Lena Tlati speaks for uh, the police there. Mr. Tlati, you have listened to uh, a good part of this conversation. I want to start off with uh, this Shigisha group. Have there been any charges laid against this group of people in Pumalanga for harassing uh, businesses in Pumalanga, wanting basically to extort money from these businesses? Have you, as the police, had any charges laid against this grouping? Let me say good morning to you, Tony, and all the listeners. So far as I know, we, don't, we do not have a case which was opened against a group called Shigisha. Mm -hmm. So we do not have a bad case. So I'll only speak on things that have been got before our attention, and we, we, we deliberated on those issues in the form of opening a case. So we do not have. And are you aware of activities of this group because the allegation is that they go around harassing people, business people that is demanding a stake, 30% in their businesses. Have you had any such uh, allegations against this grouping as the police? Yeah, look, Tony, as it was said by the MNC, there are different groups that uh, have organized themselves. They'll often go to business people, you know, uh, engaging in a form of getting uh, in, uh, some contracts or, or whatsoever. Mm. At times, the business people would call us, maybe let me say, mining activity. They would call us to go and participate in a form of diffusing whatever tension that might erupt between the negotiation, the, uh, during the negotiation. Mm. So there are different groups that we often called uh, to say, well, there is now this particular group that went to a particular mine Obviously, in terms of our mandate, we will respond. But there are no cases that have been opened that I will refer to in relation to Shigisha. I have a, a former police officer who says he was with uh, the K-9 unit in Leidenberg in Pumalanga. And basically, the long and short of it, he says they were fired for doing their jobs. And that was to arrest a person who was running an illegal cigarette trade. Were they fired for doing their jobs? Are you aware? You see, Tony, though I did not prepare myself in relation to that case, because it's long time now, but yes, I do remember some facts. I do not want to engage much on that issue, Tony. One, because the processes were followed, I mean, due processes that we've got internally, and they were found to have been done something which was uncalled for, and in that regard, the, the verdict was that they should lose their jobs. What exactly so were they no, fired there, for? There, there is no police officer truly that can be fired for doing a good job. The, the allegation here, Mr. Shati, is that the entire K-9 unit of Leidenberg was dismissed in 2018 for essentially doing their jobs. And uh, the further allegation is that senior management became uncomfortable with this group that was doing its job? Yeah, look, 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 Tony, like I said, that I did not prepare myself much on that case, only on this one of Mr. Bortman. But what I can say is that that case was investigated really by the Hawks and internal processes that were followed 
let them for being detached. So now I do not want to get to engage into an argument of saying they have been discharged because of doing a good job. Mm. The findings of that teaching, so it fit for them to lose their jobs. And that's what happened. All right, let's bring the conversation. Um, continue holding the line, uh, Brigadier, and we're going to come back to you. Let me come back to studio. Mr. Letwaba, yes. you've heard from the MMC. The Shigisha Group is merely a business forum. Many exist, as he says, in Pumalanga, and they do what is necessary to try and get themselves um, into the business space. H how do you come to the conclusion alongside people like uh, Mandla uh, Portman <coughs> that these are vigilantes? What the MMC is saying is absolutely not true. Uh, Mpumalanga and including Emalaseni, uh, it's a complete typical example of a mafia state. This Shigisha group, these are called Mavigela Mbuso. These are people who are defending inherently corrupt councillors, executive mayor, and municipal managers. He knows very well, including his. His, uh, himself. So what Manda is saying, we interact, we go and visit one another, we share a structures, problems that are experienced. The gentleman Manda Bothman is completely correct. And I want to but tell you something. But what proof some, is there? You yes. see, this is, this is the problem that mm. we get as media. Mm. Someone makes an allegation against the other and there is absolutely no proof. The MMC, if perhaps... He had anything to hide. I doubt he would be Thank you here. so much. You saw Mandla played yesterday open cast to, to the world community. Mm. In fact, it was watched not even in South Africa because we've got uh, social media we share with the Germans, the British and Americans about the mayhem that is happening. Mm. Let me tell you something. Councillors, MMCs, including the ME, some of the MECs of Mpumalanga, They've got their own hit squad. They've got their own vigilante group. You make mention of that particular, you make mention or you talk somehow bad about a particular MEC. Mm. You must know that during the night in question, you must just take cover. It's, it, it works like that. Yes. And then th another problem, Koli, that is the problem. It's very problem. This is a cardinal point that I want to make to the nation. Mm. The police in Pumalanga, the criminal justice system in Pumalanga is completely collapsed in Tatem Gambi, number one. Number two, the criminal justice has not only collapsed, mm. police are part and parcel of this hit squad. And, and the worst part of it, when you talk about Mbombela, mm. Mbombela is a capital city of of. of, of of Mpumalanga province, precisely because it is where cases are being destroyed. All right. It's and then I want to show you a picture here. Let's hang on right there. Let's, let, let's stop right there. Yes. Here's a former police officer. You said you've been in the service since 2004. Yes. All the way up until 2018. Yes. And, and you were with a, a particular unit there. Exactly. All right. There are so many unresolved cases. He mentions Semim Patlanyan. Yes. Semim Patlanyan, as I understand it, his case remains unresolved today. There was the other case of the Mbombela uh, speaker, Jimmy Mutlala. His case was very prominent. In 2012, he was killed as a result For one billion. Of, of the stadium that was built in Bumalanga around the 2010 World mm. Cup. His case remains unresolved. You were in the service. Why was this, were these cases difficult to crack if you guys were genuinely doing your jobs? They are not difficult to crack, as mm. I indicated. Mm. They are not. Mm. Um, Golly, there's a, I, I'm having a, a problem. It's not myself only. A problem with, with um, the spokesperson of Mpumalanga Police, mm. Leonard Lati. Mm. He's always trying to shield something that it's there for everybody to see. Absolutely. I just mentioned the brutal murder of my former colleague. Mm. Uh, um, may his r uh, soul rest in peace. 
the warrant officer Matebula. Mm. All the evidence that that would have made arrest happen were not followed. Yeah. Now you, you are asking me if we were doing our job, mm. why were these cases uh, not correct? Mm. I just indicated that there is a person whom we arrested more than five times yeah. for illegal cigarettes. There was also tell me about this person. Do you, as the police, have any proof that mm. perhaps he may have had any links with um, senior government officials yes. or even prominent politicians in Bumalang? Mm. What I tell you now, the, this particular lady was working with a, a Captain Nkwanyane. That person was a commander of the Hawks, the serious and violent office of the Hawks in Mpumalang. Mm. I'm seated here. That particular person is dismissed from the service. How? Because we put pressure to uh, 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 General Patan to say, General, as, as, as junior members, whatever, the little thing that we do yeah. it, it gets all over the media. All right, let me, have, let me, uh, let me cut to the chase. Yes. Why do you think the cases, and one prominent one is at, at, at that, that of Jimmy Moshad, still remains unresolved? Politicians are involved. As indicated, Goli, mm -hmm. uh, Mpumalanga, I, I don't know how hell looks, looks like, but I, I would want to believe that Mpumalanga, it's, it's another hell. That is a state within a state. Mm. There are good cops in Mpumalanga, yeah. but because senior police officers are involved in these issues yes. and we report to them even if you can go to them with your information that mm. whatever uh, colonel captain have got this information All we right. must arrest this person you they will make sure that you are you're not going to do your job and if you persist to do that they use this word we're going to flush you out of the system yes and it, it happened with us mmc let's bring you back in it was said in that clip that we played of uh, Mandla Porter, he says, you were brought to Mpumalanga by our deputy president right now, David Mabuza, and you were brought in from Swaziland. Firstly, do you have any relationship with the deputy president of the country right now? Okay. Uh, thanks, Cole. <clears throat> uh, well, what I can say is that uh, I was brought in the planet at by the will of God and my parents, uh, not by the former provincial chairperson premier and the current deputy president. Mm. And uh, I started my schooling in what 15 Komazi, mm. known or better known as Mkobots. Do, do you originate from Swaziland? Yes. Uh, I'm originally from. Swaziland. Mkobotsi, what 15, Komazi, uh, in Mpumala, no, Tanzania cool. region. All right. That's and where I'm from and started my schooling. All right. So tell us about any relationships that you may have had with David Mabuza when he was the premier of Mpumalanga. Did you have any relationship with him? Uh, the only relationship I had with uh, the then premier of Mpumalanga was uh, that I was idealizing him. He was an inspiration to me. He assisted a number of people mm. whom I know and I don't know mm -hmm. uh, to be where they are now. Mm. Uh, I can uh, take Newsroom Africa to Emalatheni or Nkangala where <laughs> he built uh, even houses with some <laughs> business people <laughs> and uh, even his foundation assisting young people because that's the future of the country mm. in terms of education. Yeah. That's the better part of how I know the deputy president. And he has left the space of Mpumalanga. Mm. He's in the national space now, which we must respect. Other than that, uh, that's how I know the deputy president, that he had a good heart. But if he had a bad heart, yeah. maybe the elders, because they know the other part, they can speak, but I'm not, He's a spokesperson and he's not an ancestor. Okay. All I can say that David all the, the, the allegations. The genesis of confusion. The, uh, deputy, the current deputy president of the Republic of South Africa, David Mabuza, is the genesis 
All what they can of, say of the on problem is that the in Pumalanga province is the genesis of the problems in the country. Is the genesis of all the problems in the ANC. All right. There is, Lituaba, not, there is not Mr. Mr. even Lituaba a single thing that I'll ever tell the people He's about Didi Mabuza. I'm not He from I'm not from Lightenbeck. He must also account to all the 48 farms that were made. And I'm here to engage. He has led for no, gentlemen, criminal to be cases against Didi Mabuza. All right. So, gentlemen, gentlemen. So he's from Lightenbeck. Let's do this. I'm from Emalafe. Let's do this. You're coming to defend Didi Mabuza. Let's do this. The indefensible. Mr. Letuab, let's do this. I'm going to take a breather right now. We're going to come back. And I want to show I you want this. To, indeed, we're going to have a look at that, but I also want to talk about these allegations that continue to circulate around the name of the Deputy President, David Mabuza. It's a brutal man. But call it, it's, it's I, a man. I plead that it's can I be protected man. because when Leidenberg is speaking, I'm not in interjection. Mm. And when I'm speaking, maybe because I'm alone, people who are mentioned are not here and they are two am one even the at time they've got more time than me right. and i'm not interjection when they speak we can we not be emotional and engage so right. that we find a common ground you, you're absolutely right and i did say during one of the breaks that my let's people, be civil to one people, another 37 of my people that Mr. Mr. Gambi from 2009 till 27 20, were assassinated all cases flash out the families i even went to Afri Forum and Dr. Hemen Mashaba. Mm. The families of 37 people All right, came Mr. to Mashishin Civic Court. They want Let a soldier who killed and for what reason? Let me ask you this. Please, I'm asking you. Let's cooperate with one another. We are now closing this. The police commissioner of Mpumalanga, indeed, he was called useless here by a gentleman that you say is speaking it's the truth true, I support about Mpumalang. Very briefly, why would the <clears throat> General Zuma be useless? Thank why? you so much. I'll leave you th with this post. Number one, here is General Zuma in police uniform conducting an ANC rally with ANC people, ANC people wearing uh, ANC regalia. It, I wrote Mashishin Civic Coalition wrote this letter, we wrote a complaint letter to Kethasi Tole. I can show you in my WhatsApp, right. where he said he has commissioned the, the, the investigation quickly. Number two, there are no, we don't have police in Mpumalanga province. The criminal justice system in Mpumalanga has co co collapsed. Even General uh, 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 Zuma, uh, General Monty Betuel Zuma, was convicted of uh, unlawfully or negligent of firearm. He's still investigated for uh, 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 perjury. Yeah. He was, uh, there are a lot of things. Then I want to show you something here, Mutatem uh, 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 Women in the, whole South, in the whole of South Africa, the only province where women are being raped in the scale that has never been seen before, is in Pumalanga province. I've got, I'll, sh I'll, I'll give you, there's the evidence. Female, it says female police officers are being given counseling after they were physically and brutally raped by a brigadier. Oh. And this brigadier is eligible for, for these things. We right. have uh, now another uh, issue. All right, it's, it's unfortunately because of time. I'm going to ask you to leave all those articles here. We're going to follow up on the allegations around the police in Mpumalanga. Sir, your final thoughts on the state of policing in Mpumalanga. You're a former member. Very quickly, do we have a police service in Mpumalanga or indeed has it collapsed? As the police says? system in Mpumalanga has collapsed. Mm. It's collapsed. Right. Okay, we'll leave it there. Gentlemen, my thanks to all of you for coming into studio. Leonard Tlati, uh, my thanks to you as well for participating in this discussion. And let me also just state for the record that as Newsroom Africa, we did attempt to contact the office of the deputy president. And at this time, the office has told us that um, it's not yet time for the deputy president to, to comment on these issues. They are aware of what has been said about the deputy president, perhaps in due course they will uh, give us their side.
of the story. Thank you very much for at least watching this particular section of the conversation. We are trying by all means to unearth what is going on in Pumalanga, but the understanding is that this issue of the hijacking of developmental projects does not only affect Mpumalanga. KZN has been mentioned. Yesterday I spoke to the SACP in the Western Cape and the leadership there says the same thing is happening there. In fact, the president has acknowledged it and said, quote unquote, maximum attention must be given to this matter. So it is a matter that is well known and it goes right to the top.